Hi, in this video we're going to look at Maverick's turntable animation functions and once you've set up your scene what I suggest is you adjust uh, your depth of field just to give you a more true to life sort of rendering of each frame. So the first thing you would have done is adjusted your light so I won't cover that in any detail today in this video but if you go to your light mixer you can see my light mix is on and you can see I've adjusted the output of some of the lights in the scene and the next thing is in the render tab you want to adjust for the resolution that's suitable for the format that you want to save in so mine's set to 1280 by 720 which is fine if you want to upload this to social media or something like that if you're wanting to save this maybe for a website and have it you know as a, a focus on your website or have some renderings and animations on your website I suggest maybe you save this as a higher resolution probably 920 by 1080 in full HD would be suitable but just bear in mind that that's dependent on the speed of your graphics card or your Nvidia graphics card so the better card you've got in your computer ie a desktop computer or in a laptop you'll find that video cards are a little slower so it'll take obviously longer to render each individual frame in your scene and one of the great things with Maverick is that obviously it uses the GPU or graphics card in your computer so you can leave this to run when it's saving out each frame and minimize that and continue working on your drawings or whatever else is that you need to do whilst it's rendering in the background the other thing I just wanted to mention is under the camera settings you've got an aperture setting here and this controls the depth of field so if just to give you a quick overview if you right click on your image you'll see that you can set autofocus and focus on a particular area in your scene make sure you've got these set off and you just click the autofocus button and it will focus to the area that you've right clicked on now to control the depth of field I actually have my aperture lighting uh, locked you can see it's a little lock button if I switch that off it will use the shutter speed or the lighting uh, settings in my shutter speed so this is like a real world camera you can see it's gone quite dark obviously if I adjust my shutter speed down and increase the amount of light coming into my scene that will brighten it up but I do suggest that you have your aperture lock on because that will then fix the lighting based on your light mixer settings and if you adjust the aperture up or down it won't affect the lighting at all so the lower the aperture is the greater that um, out of focus area is okay and as I say the lower that setting the, the more noticeable that uh, out of focus area or depth of field effect is I normally have this set up at about probably 45 to about 50 I find that gives a good balance between uh, areas that are in focus and those areas that are out of focus so just adjust that to your preferences but as I say I normally have that set about 45 or 50 somewhere around that so the next thing to do is once you've set your resolution and once you've set your depth of field is to come over to the render window here and come to the option called turntable animation now this brings up a window where you've got a number of options in here let me just drag this across so we can see our render window here what I normally do when I'm previewing at my animations is I set the material type to clay if you flip that little slider you'll see that it renders in a gray like material so you can see the impact of lighting in your scene and it's just to give you a quick preview and what I normally do is just uh, well covering a few things here first the start angle is set to zero and the rotation angle here is set to 360 so that will give you a total rotation around the object of 360 degrees I set my frames per second at 30 you can set this lower or higher but that's a good in-between value uh, to give you more frames per second and I've set my frames total number of frames is 240 so there'll be 240 snapshots if you like as it's rotating around 360 degrees the next thing I do is you have a few options to um, set your rotation around the scene that you've got set up but I normally come in here and set the pivot here to scene objects and I set that to pivot around the room now 
what we can do is preview each frame in our animation. So I'll just rotate this round so that we can see the ring sort of from a side view here. And you can see my object centered quite well when my ring is rotated so that it's uh, in this sort of front view. You can see it's still fitting in my scene or in my animation sort of frame. And I can see that it's, as I say, located in the right spot. So it gives you just a quick preview of each individual frame. So that's a handy little thing to be able to use before you save out your animation and you've spent hours rendering this and you find that something's not in the right frame. Obviously you can come and click the close button here and then select your object by holding down your shift button and then clicking with your right mouse button to move it around in your scene. Okay, And just uh, set it up again just to make sure that it's centered in your scene. Come back into render and come to turntable animation. Again I'll just drag this out of the way here a bit. Set my scene pivot to the room and once again I can just quickly preview that just to make sure it's laid out. And you can go forwards and backwards obviously through this step just to make sure that your object is centered before you start rendering each frame. Okay the next thing is so, ne so now we'll click the next button and this allows me to save to a folder that I've specified so I can open up that folder and I'm in a folder called animations crossover band and I'm going to set a prefix for each of these files that are saved and just call it image so each of my images will be saved as image 001, 002 through to image 0240 and I can click the save you can leave the rest of these settings as they are and then click proceed and it will start to render out your scene now let me just go back actually a step because I don't want this rendering in clay material so I'll slide this back to one frame number one and I'll click the next button and again it's going to save these as my previous settings image .jpg and I click the proceed button to start the rendering process. So this will start rendering each individual frame as I say in your scene and it will continue till that's completed. Depending upon the speed of your card that can take a minute per frame or it could take two or three minutes depending upon as I say your graphics card and also the render settings that you've selected. So I'll let this run for a little while and we'll come back to this in a moment. Okay, so I've just let this run for six frames here, so about six minutes. It's taking about a minute per frame here, so you can quickly work that out. It's about four hours of rendering time. But as I say, the nice thing in Maverick Studio is that you can minimize the application and just let the graphics card keep working whilst uh, you're super use free to do whatever else you want to do on that uh, computer. So I'm just going to stop this in a moment, but um, you can open the folder then to view each one of the frames so let me just click stop and what I'll do is I'll open up uh, this folder with a whole bunch of images I've already rendered and here's my folder with all my images now in the most recent Windows update in March of this year there's a new tool called the video editor so I'll open up the video editor here and we can uh, start a new project here and we can give it a name if we like here so I'll just call this cross over band click OK then we can add the folder of images here. So click Add. Actually what we'll do is we'll just drag and drop them. So let's select all of the images, the first one and the last one. And then just holding my mouse down, I'll just copy them across and add them to this project. It just does take a few moments I've found. I mean there are a few hundred files there, but it's compiling them all.
and once we've got all of those images there they are what we can do is so when you can see there's a little check mark next to each image here so I'll just place them in the storyboard now by default you can see it adds three seconds to each image so it's like a slideshow sort of thing it will add three seconds by default but what we want to do is obviously play those images a lot quicker so we can do that again by uh, selecting all of the images there holding shift and picking all of them you can see there's a check mark or a tick next to each of them and here under duration I can click there and we'll adjust this to a fraction of a second so we'll try 0 0.05 I think yeah and we'll just press enter so that clip animation cycle is now about 13 seconds long okay so we'll click the play button I'll just give us a quick preview it's a bit jittery at this stage because they're not actually rendered out into an animation just yet it's just flipping through each image I'm just checking the speed so if I'm happy with that I can click finish video and I can set the video quality here it depends on the resolution you've saved those images out but uh, medium for 1280 pixels or less than that sorry 720 pixels I should say or 1080p uh, is recommended so I'm going to choose that uh, under more options here I've got that use hardware accelerated encoding checked it'll just speed up the process it's pretty quick it's it doesn't take long at all and just click um, export here and it's uh, just confirming the name and folder that I'm saving to I'll just call this crossover band dash animation and uh, click export so it's just going away exporting this in future releases of Maverick there will be the ability to encode and uh, create these videos automatically from within the animation builder and when it's finished it's going to play back your animation and that's basically it so you can see the depth of field there in the back of the ring there and uh, there's the animation file up here and you can upload that to your Facebook page or social media or website or whatever alright I hope that helps and we'll see you in another video Okay, bye for now.